Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and if you're here, you're interested in learning and playing with JavaScript, CSS, and all things front-end. Today we are going to continue to look into the world of Dino, 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 Dino. The uh, alternative to Node. Not yet 1.0, but still very exciting and very promising. If you don't know what Dino is, I encourage you to look at my previous videos where I explained Dino. And also, this is part two of some parts of videos where I'm building, along with you, a HTTP server in Dino. Uh, essentially a port of this node module called Micro in Dino with my own little flair for it. If you might recall where we left off last time, I was trying to figure out a name for this package I have since decided to name this Dencro, which is a mixture of Micro and Dino. So it's Dencro. That seems to be the trend with all these Dino packages, having some part of Dino and like the node package and kind of merging them together. Today's episode, we're going to continue along building out Dencro. And the first thing that we're gonna to do together is actually add some nice command line argument parsing. So this is the repo on GitHub, and I have up here the code that I pushed up that we worked on yesterday. Uh, just before recording this video, I actually upgraded Dino to 0 0.35 because Dino is quickly releasing versions as they try to get towards 1.0. Luckily for me, the only big change here was just updating the uh, URLs of my dependencies. Uh, but this is the repo, Dencro, and an adaptation of Micro for Dino. And I have kind of the to-do list. And these are things that I'm hoping to uh, program with you together. And the first thing we're doing today, as I mentioned just a few seconds ago, is adding command line argument parsing, such that we can actually have a nice little command line and pass in options to there. And what's really cool, really cool, I have to call this out, uh, Olu, uh, Olu Wasitemi, uh, you opened a PR on this repo. Like that was so cool to add command line argument parsing. And I gotta say, I'm pretty sure that it would work. Like I'm pretty sure, I like this SH, let me actually steal that. Uh, I'm not gonna merge it in just cause I wanna code this together with everyone out here, but thank you. That's awesome. Uh, I encourage you all to put in pull requests. I will definitely talk about it as I make the videos if they're applicable. Um, does it look like you expect? It does exactly look like what I expect. And I'm gonna kind of recreate that going forward, which is really cool. Uh, that one idea of having this be SAH is definitely appropriate, so I'm gonna do that. So uh, thank you so much for this, this is really cool. But just for the sake of the video, let's actually code together a command line argument parsing. So what this lets us do is essentially, right now we have the example here to run Dino, where we're just passing in um, one argument, right? So if I go into my Dencro package, I'm just reading the Dino arguments just raw, like just directly reading them. It's just an array, just directly reading them, not really doing anything fancy with that. So instead what I can do here is uh, let's import this package, this command line argument passing uh, thing. So let's do this, I'm gonna copy and paste this into here and like always gonna include the version to make sure that I'm on the right version. I'm gonna save that and then just to make sure that the um, that the TypeScript definitions are pulled down. I'm just gonna build this once just to make sure. So it's downloading it, the package, now things are working, which means that this here should now, if I reopen this, yep, now I have nice IntelliSense in here telling me what things are. So to start things off, I'm going to say, uh, args equals uh, parse dino args. Let's just do that first. And uh, let's save that. Open this up here, let's make this bigger. And let's see what happens as we pass things in. We'll kind of play around with what this is doing. Uh, compiling. And this is a object that has one property, which is an underscore, which is an array of all of the non-named arguments. So what that means is if I were to do this, be like um, food banana, you can see here that I've named this argument food, 
and this is the value of banana, which is cool. And of course, here as well is the essentially the root handler for Dencro. Um, what I want to do is two things. One is I want to default the handler to, well, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, let's have one named argument, which is port, and where we can set the default port that we're serving on. So this is going to be port 8080. Cool. So it's coming as port 8080. And if I go back to the docs here, I can see that parse takes in some options. And one of them is uh, default, which is an object mapping string argument names to default values. So what I actually want to do here is have default and have port b8080, such that if somebody doesn't pass it in, I can still use that value. So let me save that. If I say 100, the value should still be 100. And now if I remove port, the port is 80, which is sweet. So what I can do here, here's port. I can say here, um, let's just do this for now. We're just going to do args.port. And then this is going to be keys and strings. So that should be fine. And then this is the array of my handlers. So that should all be good as well. So now uh, let's actually change this. So this is the, so that's one thing done. I've now added support. Let's just do this one thing. I've now added support for letting you pass in what port to use to serve up the server. So if I were to change the port 3000, run that, need a handler. Oh, because I need to change how it's reading the handler. The handler's coming in that array. So let's actually change this to um, args underscore, just to make this work for now. We'll iterate after this. And where else is this being used? Right there. And that's the last one. So now if I save that, it's working. Uh, not on port. Oh, well, I have to change the console. Right? Right. So args.port. Let's make this into a template string so it actually shares that value. Run it again. And here we have port 3000 which if we run, we have here the value from the handler as we saw previously. So that is working as expected. My usual workflow here is also, of course, to, um, uh, to be, when I have an incremental change, so this is better readme formatting, a individual commit. And this one, I always like to review my uh, commits before I actually commit them. So I'm importing parse, um, correctly parsing the Dino arguments, saying the default argument is 800 changing these values, changing this here, everything looks good. So uh, feature and support to set the port that we serve content over, that we serve content from. And we'll commit that and save that. And of course, which is always fun is we can uh, push that up. I mean, this, you can already see this if we wanted to, but if I go back here, I can now refresh. And here we go. We got that nice and updated. Sweet. So, Net, that is also one thing done, right? So now you have that readme. This is done as well. One thing off the to-do list. Sweet. Now I actually want to do some more parsing here. Um, so this is the next one where we're going to load index.ts by default if no handler is given as an argument. So what that means is uh, this is my folder of example. And I'm going to actually rename this to index. Actually, let's leave it at handler for now. We'll leave it at handler for now. But what this is going to do, essentially what I want to support is if I just point to, if I run Dino you know, from a directory, Sorry, if I run Dencro from a directory, it's going to try to look up the index file from there uh, so that it can just run that by default. So let's actually do this. Let's actually go into example and then let's try this. If I do, let me make sure that this still runs. Let's remove that. Let's remove this. Let's do this. So this is from the example folder. 
I'm running Den Crow and I'm pointing to Handler, which means that this is still working as expected. Awesome. Now what I want to be able to do is delete handler.ts and have it pick up index.ts from the example folder by default. Uh, for this use case, I'm just going to start, we'll just have it be handler for now, just to make sure that this is work. This is working. So we need a handler. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to change that behavior a little bit. Um, this is where we're actually taking the handler from here. Uh, so let's actually take this here. I want to say, um, this is me called handler path. Let's do this. Let's move that up here. Uh, we're going to say await. So we're going to say Dino args zero. So this is going to be the first one there. Or we're going to say, uh, I'll say, uh, default handler file equals uh, handler.ts. We'll say that for now. Do this and this, this. So I'm using actually a new JavaScript feature, um, nullish coalescing to set defaults there. That should work fine. So let's look at this. So we're saying, let's look at the real path here. So we're gonna say, uh, let's say, um, handler, Eh, real path. This is fine. Default handler file name. So it's either going to look up the argument here. If it's null or undefined, it's going to use the default value and look up the real path. So let's actually console log the uh, handler path here. And we'll run this. Need a handler. But this is right here, right here. So this is actually pulling up the right file that we expected. If I change this to handler2, the failing case, no such file or directory found. Cool. So that's Good. So what I want to do is we're going to say handler path. We're going to say let to handle the error case. We're going to do this. We're going to take that. We're going to say try catch await handler path. And we'll say if it errors out, we're going to say, uh, no handler found tried loading and we'll say uh handler path for now should be fine cool we'll save that so now if i run this we should get a better error message there no handler found tried loading undefined uh that's not correct we tried loading um uh, we're gonna, I need this value up here so I can use this for the debugging reasons. Let's actually do uh, handler file. Handler file. We'll do it like this. Try loading handler file like that. Cool. We'll do this. Try loading handler2. Cool. So now if I change this back to handler, Try loading handler one, dir, back to zero. Okay, so that's working, right? That's working? Yeah, look at that. That's cool, that's working. So now all you can do, when you have this installed globally as a command line, uh, did I still, do I still have that working, Uh I guess not. So this, I can just run this from this directory and it's just going to load handler.ts, but for our examples, I want it to actually be index.ts, which means I have to put here index.ts, but that's another thing entirely. Um, let's rename this. We'll do index rename index. So now I can, all we have to do is run this and it's working. Look at that. So now we have a nice little better CLI for that. Very cool. And let's go back to my readme. Do this, mark that off. Let's do toggle this. So this is a whole other thing already done. So that's, that's a good amount of command line parsing, I would say, which is I'm happy with. So let's add this. Uh, we've renamed the handler, which is fine. And then the root changes are essentially to say, uh, what is the handler file? If you supply one, we'll use that. If not, we'll default to index.ts. We're gonna try to get the real path of that file. 
If we can find it, we'll assign it to the handler path. If it doesn't, we'll get an error and we'll say, we couldn't find the handler, try loading this file, you know, let's exit. Then after that, it just kind of keeps on its same way where it loads the handler and then just serves things as you expect, which is exactly what we want. So let's actually copy and paste this, save that right there. Commit that, cool. Uh, that is command line parsing with Dino. Hopefully that was informational to you, how to do some command line parsing. It was kind of um, uh, stream of consciousness style, like it could almost be a live stream coding that, which I always find these things to be. Hopefully that's enjoyable. I'd be curious to hear if these like live coding as I think about it. Like I didn't, I didn't plan this ahead. I knew what I wanted to do. I kind of had some confidence that I'd be able to actually do it, but I didn't really have a whole choreograph like, let me show you how things work, which I usually do in other videos. I try to make sure I have some prep. This is more like, let me just learn with you on camera. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about that style. Uh, but that's, that's command line parsing with Dino. Not the fanciest thing, but something that will make your applications uh, more pleasant to use. Um, stay tuned for next week where we're going to do the uh, next item on my to-do list. If you have any other ideas what to do with this project, I'm all ears. Um, but uh, hopefully that was fun and you learned some new things. Uh, I will see you next week. If you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. Tell your friends, family, and pets. I have a great pet audience. My last name is Wolf. Wolves love watching this channel. I'll see you again next week. And until then, stay Dino.